In this video, I'm going to talk about the reporting requirements for public companies in the United States. Public companies like Microsoft and Amazon need to file a number of reports with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, assuming that a public company has already gone public, which means it's filed its initial registration statement, which is called the S-1, and did its IPO, it's going to have a number of recurring reporting requirements, such as filing a 10Q every quarter, filing a 10K every year, filing an 8K when there's a material event that occurs, and so forth. So I want to go through some of these reporting requirements in a little more detail. But first, I want to note that not all public companies have the same reporting requirements. For example, smaller companies in some cases are required to make fewer disclosures. Also, emerging growth companies may in some cases follow scale disclosure requirements. Also, foreign private issuers will file a 20F instead of a 10K, and they'll also file Form 6K for other types of disclosures. Okay, so not all publicly uh, public companies are filing the exact same reports, but I'm gonna go through the ones you're more likely to hear about, the more common ones, okay? Now, Form S-1, as I noted before, this is the initial registration statement required by the Securities Act of 1933. So if you hear that there's a company that's going to do an IPO, you will see that they will file this Form S-1. Now, this S-1 is going to include two parts. Part one includes a thing called a prospectus, and that perspective is gonna have a description of the company's business. What do they do? How do they make money? It's also gonna have a list of risks that are faced by that company. It'll talk about the competition, it'll talk about the industry, different things that can go wrong to try and help investors so they know what they're investing in, what kind of risks that they're taking on. It'll also have audited financial statements so that investors could look at the company's income statement, balance sheet, and so forth. Okay. Now, part two is going to include information about the type of securities being issued, uh, the, the, the issuance costs of those securities, and so forth. Now, you can see an example here of an S1 for the company Google. Okay, and so April, you probably, it's too small for you to see, but this was actually filed with the SEC April 29th, 2004. Okay, so an S1 is filed uh, before the company does its IPO. Now, the Form 10K, so the S1 is when the company's initially going public, but it's not something that's recurring. You don't file, the company doesn't file an S1 every single year. It's when it does its IPO. Once you are a public company, then you have the recurring reporting requirements, and one of those is the 10K. So the 10K is filed every year, and it needs to be filed within 90 days of the company's fiscal year end. So if the fiscal year end is December 31st, within 90 days of that, the company is going to need to file a 10K with the Securities and Exchange Commission. What's the 10K going to include? It's going to include audited financial statements, Okay, so you're going to have the income statement, the balance sheet, the statement of cash flow. You're going to have notes to the financial statements. Okay, so after the financial, it's going to say note one, you know, accounting policies, revenue recognition. It's going to talk about note two, note three, et cetera. You'll have a note talking about debt. When does the debt mature and so forth? Also, I should know with the audited financial statements, it's actually kind of cool. You'll actually see the audit, the audit firm's opinion, the company that did, whether it was EY, Deloitte, whoever did the audit, uh, it'll actually have... Uh, the auditor's opinion there. Now, it's also going to have a description of the company's business. It's going to have risks that are faced by the company. And then it's going to have something that's pretty cool called MDNA for short, Management's Discussion and Analysis of Financial Condition and Results of Operations. What you can see in MDNA, something the company will tell you, like, look, here's why our operating margin increased or decreased, or oh, our operating cash flow went up or it went down and here's why. So you're basically getting directly from management a discussion of what happened with the company and, and, and why uh, things went down. You know, why did the gross margin percentage go up or so forth. Hey, so 10K every year is gonna be filed with the SEC. So you can go to sec.gov and you can find uh, the company's uh, uh, 10K. Now, the 10Q is going to be filed within 35 days of the end of the first quarter, of the end of the second quarter, and third quarter. So there's three 10Qs that are going to be issued each year. 
Now, you might be thinking, well, hey, there's four quarters in a year. Why is there only three 10Qs? Because for the fourth quarter, there's not a 10Q filed because the 10K gets filed. Okay, so you have three 10Qs and then it's followed by the 10K. Okay, so you don't have four 10Qs filed. Now, in the 10Q, the 10Q has less extensive disclosures than the 10K. It's not as long generally as the 10K. It doesn't have as much information. It will have financial statements. However, the financial statements are not audited in the 10Q. Okay, so you've got audited financial statements in the 10K. 10Q has unaudited uh, financial, but it will, it will have financial statements. Now, next, I want to talk about a Form 8K. Okay, so if you've ever seen a Form 8K and you say, what's this all about? The answer is, it depends. It could actually be about a number of different things. Now, the SEC requires a company within to file an 8K within, so basically four business days after the occurrence of what's called a material event. You say, what's that? Well, something very important happened that investors and creditors would care about. Okay, so that's, think of that as a material event. So what are some examples? So a board member decides to quit. Now that could just be, you know what, they just had some personal stuff going on, or it could be they didn't like something the company was doing. So that's a material event. Board member quits. Uh, the company uh, were to fire their auditor. So they dismiss the auditor, hire another auditor. That's a material event. You want to know about that. Hey, what's going on? Why'd they fire their auditor? Was there a dispute about the accounting? Is there something I should know about? Uh, also, if the company were to uh, agree to a merger, that they're going to merge with another firm, uh, they're, they're terminating a merger agreement, uh, they're completing an acquisition of another company. Uh, it's If you have a very large impairment, right? There could be some massive goodwill impairment or something like that. The company files a Form 8K uh, to, to make that disclosure. The company decides to file bankruptcy. So this is not, this is not like the complete list of all the different things. It could be a number of things that can result in a Form 8K being triggered and need to be filed. Again, it's just something important has happened and the company needs to disclose this so investors and creditors can know about it. Now, there are a number of other filings that a, a public company might be required to make. I'm not gonna give you a list of every single one, but just to give you an example, also, uh, if you see this form right here, it's a proxy statement. So when the company is is having their, uh, their annual meeting, and there's gonna be a vote, for example, for, for the board of directors. So there's a proxy statement the company needs to, the company need to file uh, whenever there's gonna be a sh something that's going up for a shareholder vote. Okay, so you'll see that form. Also form 144, uh, if the company's intending to sell restricted securities or control securities. For example, if the company is gonna be selling uh, some security specifically to its executives, okay, that have filed form 144. And again, this is just a partial list. There are many other different filings in different situations that you would see that a public company would have to file with the Securities and Exchange Commission.